Jim Cramer and David Faber had a discussion today about Robin Hood, Charlie Munger's comments about Robin Hood failing, and crypto. And after that, I want to discuss these topics as they relate to the upcoming GameStop NFT marketplace. What's up, Ape Nation? Welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, please smash the like button so we can get this video out to more people. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. All right, let's listen in to what Kramer and David had to say, and then I want to mention a few things after that. There was a little bit of disconcerting, uh, the attack on Robin Hood by Munger. I mean, that's you know, kind of worn thin. Saying that God was being just in unraveling. Yeah, I, just, I just think that these are, it's too harsh a judgment. Uh, crypto made a lot of people money. Uh, David, you know that when you blast something that has made a lot of people money, and that's not Robin Hood, but it's crypto, it leaves you thinking, well, Maybe you're just not part of the, the current firmament. Yeah, I hear you, Jim. Uh, and, you know, I, I have refrained from discussing crypto a lot, in part because I'm still struggling to fully understand it. But there's something that I have sort of understood at this point, which is whatever your opinion may be, and obviously we know Mr. Munger's when it comes to Bitcoin and the currencies, the underlying architecture, Jim, and I know you know this, is here to stay. Uh, blockchain is a significant part and only going to grow in terms of what it means for the ability to do, oh, so many different things in terms of transactions and so many other things. NFTs and tokenizing or whatever the verb you want to use here, that's true. That's here to stay, too. And this is being institutionalized. So the underlying infrastructure that is being created for crypto, that may be way more important than whether the currencies are valid or not. Yeah, I, look, uh, David, I am sure when you speak to people, you've got the best people out there. And if you were to ask them about crypto, what they'd be thinking is our customers want it. Our clients want it. Our investors want it. They're not going to say, so yep. therefore all of those constituencies are wrong, David. They can't do that. No, you're, ab you're absolutely right, Jim. And, and in fact, last night at dinner here, there was a presentation, a panel. Uh, discussion on crypto. Uh, and there was a large institutional money manager there talking about that very fact. Uh, this is here to stay. Um, you know, perhaps it is generational in nature to a certain extent in terms of our unwillingness or inability to fully understand it, but it's here and it's not going anywhere and it's only going to grow. Again, separate conversation perhaps from what Bitcoin is worth. But as for that underlying architecture, as for NFTs, as for blockchain, that's only going one way, Jim. Yeah, I mean, Carl, I think that they're out of touch. Out of touch on this. Uh, you may think it's worth nothing, but they would tell you it's worth what, if it was another thing, it's worth what people are paying. And uh, do I like it? It doesn't matter whether you like it. It's not about liking. It's, it's just, I mean, do I like the fact that a Dakuni can sell for a hundred million? Well, I don't know. I don't want a Dakuni. Uh, do I like the fact that Cezans <laughs> are very popular? It's the same thing. They have a mar There's a market for Cezanne, Carl. Yep, yeah, yeah, it's true. I mean, Buffett would counter by saying assets need to have some value, intrinsic value, which, well, which gets to the, the, the crux of the whole argument about this particular asset. I agree with Charlie Munger that it makes sense that Robin Hood is quote unraveling due to Robin Hood's bad product and their backstabbing of their customer base, retail investors. This unraveling was bound to happen. I made a video last week giving my thoughts on Robin Hood, so feel free to check that out if you want to know where I stand on the topic. But as for this video, I want to talk about crypto, NFTs, and the upcoming GameStop NFT marketplace. I remember months ago, many members of the financial press vehemently mocked Main Street as many individual retail investors were investing in crypto, NFTs, and getting excited for the anticipated GameStop NFT marketplace. I even remember many of them making fun of AMC for accepting payment in the form of crypto and for Adam Aaron hinting that the company may become a purveyor of cryptocurrencies sometime in the future. In all of these examples, the vast majority of the financial press scoffed and insulted retail investors and all things involving blockchain technologies. 
Rose. As of late, though, there seems to have been a shift in many of their opinions. As David Faber said, blockchain technologies are here to stay. They're not going anywhere. NFTs and tokenization are here to stay, and this industry is only going to grow with time. With GameStop set to launch its new NFT marketplace at the end of this quarter, it's going to be interesting to see if Kramer and Faber still have the same view regarding crypto and NFTs, or if their negative bias toward GME stock and individual retail investors will get in the way. That remains to be seen. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I genuinely believe that the gaming industry is by far the best industry for NFTs. This is due to gamers' desire to collect memorabilia from the IPs they love and gamers' willingness to purchase digital products. As I've said before, if GameStop properly executes on this opportunity, this could be huge. Imagine if major publishers and development studios like Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft, and others came on board and used GameStop's NFT marketplace. As I've mentioned in previous videos, it doesn't make sense for any of these other companies to spend the capital necessary to build their own NFT marketplaces because once they build out their own marketplace, they will have very limited reach. For example, you're not going to find NFTs for PlayStation exclusive games on a Microsoft NFT marketplace. It's just not happening. On the flip side, GameStop serves as a retailer for all publishers, all development studios, and all platforms. So in GameStop's position, it does make sense for them to build an NFT marketplace because they don't have to worry about having limited reach. They can provide NFTs for cross-platform titles while also providing NFTs for platform-exclusive games. And this is a huge benefit for GameStop. GME has already been hinting on their NFT website that Sony may be coming on board with their NFT marketplace. And if that's the case, that is massive. Hopefully we'll hear of other juggernauts coming on board soon like Microsoft, Nintendo, and others. Now, before we end the video, I do want to share an idea that I have for the GameStop NFT marketplace. I think each NFT should provide in-game utility and that GameStop should use scarcity to differentiate their NFTs from in-game microtransactions. Let me explain. Imagine if gamers could purchase an NFT from the game GameStop marketplace and that NFT provided in-game utility. Perhaps it could be an item, a cosmetic, a vehicle that could be used in-game, something. And on top of that, imagine that this NFT, this in-game item, was in very limited supply. Maybe there are only five of them. Ten. 20, something like that. And once they're gone, they're gone. Unless, of course, the original holders choose to sell. I think this would be a great idea for GameStop to consider because this would greatly increase the intrinsic value of each NFT. And I think, if done properly, it could even improve gamers' perception of NFTs in general. There's currently a negative stigma among some gamers who argue that NFTs are simply going to result in additional microtransactions. And gamers do not like microtransactions. Actions. EA found this out the hard way. But here's the thing with in-game items that are paid for in the form of microtransactions. There is an infinite supply of the in-game item, and that inherently decreases the perceived value of that in-game item. So, in conclusion, if the NFTs on the GameStop marketplace provide in-game utility and they are in very short supply, this would differentiate them from the standard microtransaction-funded items that already exist in video games games today. This would help improve gamers' perception of NFTs, and it would result in more members of the gaming community coming on board with the new GameStop NFT marketplace. And that does it for this video. Please leave a like on this video so we can get this information out to as many people as possible. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free, and it helps us out tremendously. And hopefully, we'll see you in the next video.